Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we're going to be discussing the teleological argument. Now the teleological argument is an argument that tries to prove the existence of God through a focus on the design of our world. It is also referred to as the design argument. In short, it claims that because of the complexity of our world and our universe, some thinking being needed to design it. Look how complex the human body is. Look how precise and well balanced our planet is, making it able for us to live and grow. If the world was even slightly different, we would not be able to exist on it. It is so well put and so intricately put together, so much order and regularity that there needs to be a designer, and this designer is God. Well, you reach that conclusion pretty quickly. Okay, let me explain in a bit more depth. Now, the word teleological comes from the Greek word delos, which means end or purpose or goal. And that is the fundamental principle of the teleological argument. Everything has a goal. In what way? If something has a purpose, then it must have been designed in order to have this purpose, in order to move and act to this specific goal. This was advocated by St. Thomas Aquinas. Aquinas had five ways of proving the existence of God, while his fifth way is considered to be the teleological argument. Aquinas argues that every non-intelligent thing in our world has its own purpose, a goal it tends to and it follows through natural law. We look at a specific flower. If given sunlight and water, it will grow vertical. We can take a different flower and again with sun and water it grows vertical. It's this direction and purpose of the flower following strict laws of nature. It always has the same end, always has the same delos. Okay. Now would you agree that something that lacks knowledge, an unintelligent thing, cannot fulfill a purpose unless it is guided by something with knowledge? Aquinas used the example of an archer and his bow and arrows. Imagine the unintelligent bow and arrows without their archer. It's just a bit of wooden string sitting there. In order for this to achieve its purpose and do what it was meant to do, it needs the archer to place the arrow onto the bow and shoot it. As though, in order for the bow and arrow to reach its purpose, it needs an intelligent being, someone with knowledge to guide it right. Yes. Well then, most of nature is unintelligent, yet nature itself has a purpose. Everything within nature is following a direction. So then, if every unintelligent thing needs an intelligent being to guide it, then it seems that nature, our world, and our universe needs an intelligent being to give it this direction, to give everything its purpose, and this being is what we call God. Right, I see. The teleological argument was further developed by William Paley, who argued from two points of view, design of purpose and design of regularity, and he did this with his watch analogy. Paley is taking a walk one day and he notices a rock on the floor. He quickly wonders to himself, where did that rock come from? and then quickly concludes it just came from nature. It could have probably been lying there forever. Paley carries on walking, but then he notices a watch on the floor. He picks up the watch and sees how brilliantly it's been crafted, the dials and the cogs all shaped and fashioned to give this object a specific purpose of telling the time. Paley then wonders how this watch got here, but he does not conclude the same of the watch as he had done of the stone. The complexity of the watch and its clear purpose means someone with knowledge designed this. Someone with knowledge took these materials and created this watch for a specific purpose. It is too complicated to have just appeared by chance or by nature. The watch has a designer. Would you agree? Well, yes, if I found a watch, I would obviously think that this has been designed and created by someone. Exactly. But then our world, our universe, is a trillion times more intricate and complex than a watch. So why shouldn't we think the universe has a designer? Just look at the human eye. It has a specific purpose and so intricately put together to give you sight. Does this not need a designer? Yes, I can see the argument. Paley then goes on to argue that the regularity of our universe is further proof of the existence of a designer. Our universe is so fine-tuned, so perfectly ordered, that this could not have come about by chance. If gravity was slightly stronger, the universe would not be able to exist. If the Earth was a little closer to the Sun, humans would not be able to survive. The way the universe, our planet and our lives have come about means this was calculated and planned by an intelligent being which created such regularity for life as we know it to exist. And this being is God. 
With both Aquinas and Paley's arguments, I think it's right to agree that there is an intelligent designer behind the creation of the universe. Although it's a compelling argument, I do not think the teleological argument proves the existence of God. There are a lot of problems with this theory. Go ahead, tell me. Well, although I can see Paley's logic, a complex watch needs a designer, so a complex universe needs a designer, it is still ultimately an argument from analogy. A watch is not the universe, it is completely different. So to just infer that the same principles apply by no means proves the existence of God. We have observed a watch being designed and created, and so we know if we found a watch it obviously has a designer. However, we have made no such observations with the universe, so why should we just assume it has a designer? Okay. David Hume said such thought leads you into an anthropomorphic concept of God, as though we have given God human qualities. Look at the reasoning of the teleological argument. A watch is complex, so a human designed it. The universe is very complex, so a superhuman must have designed it. It is not really consistent with the concept of a perfect god, really, because the perfect god would be nothing like a human, in any way, shape or form. So why should we reach the conclusion that just because a human designs complex things, God must therefore design even more complex things. So how else would you explain our intricate universe with such regularity? I mean, I do not think you appreciate how finely tuned this planet is, how perfectly structured it is. Oh, believe me, I do. And that is why I think it seems more down to chance than it does an intelligent design. Chance? You think this was all a fluke? All of this, such an intricate design, such regularity, was just chance? Yes, and I think this for two reasons. Firstly, no matter how fine-tuned and regular a universe is, it does not instantly rule out the possibility of chance, something I think Aquinas and Paley ruled out too quickly. I understand how precise and accurate the world and the universe had to be in order for life to grow on it. However, in an infinite amount of time, any possible state of affairs that could happen will eventually come up. So this regularity we see could just be the result of trillions and trillions of years of just randomness, different universes coming in and out of existence, and then eventually a universe randomly came about which resulted in a planet that just so happened to have the right amount of gravity at the perfect distance from a large star with the perfect amount of oxygen and a liquid substance enabling life to grow. If we are talking about an infinite amount of time, eventually a planet that can sustain life will come about. Have you heard the theory that if an infinite amount of monkeys randomly hit an infinite amount of typewriters for an infinite amount of years, eventually one of them will randomly type the complete works of Shakespeare word for word. This would not be done through a conscious effort or knowledge by the monkey. It is completely random. However, given enough time, the precise sequence of all the letters resulting in Shakespeare's work will randomly get typed. And it is the same with the universe. There have been billions of universes Universes randomly coming in and out of existence and then finally one that resulted in the planet earth with our life it does not need an intelligent designer to explain such regularity i don't know if i can agree with that how can such detail such precise regularity be down to chance well that's my second point why do you think our universe is so great if you really think about it you could quite reasonably say that the very planet and universe we live in seems more like chance than design really how could you say that john stuart mill's exact words were nearly all the things which men are hanged or imprisoned for doing to one another are nature's everyday performances meaning nature is cruel it is violent we have animals that need to kill other animals for their own survival. We have weather that destroys thousands of creatures. We have diseases that kill all the time. We even have creatures come in and then out of existence. Animals completely extinct, annihilated. For what reason would this be for? Why would an intelligent designer create such a harsh, cruel world that is so wasteful? If we step back and look at our planet, it in fact seems more like something that would come about through chance than design. The problem is, you as a human are so well adapted to your environment, you think it was designed specifically for you. So you are putting in place a designer that you think consciously built this whole planet for you to live on. However, we have come a long way in science, and Darwin's natural selection and theory of evolution have shown us that humans were not always as we are now. We were animals that changed, grew and adapted over time. We look around and think the things around us are here for a specific purpose, but in fact, they have just adapted to the environment that they are in. 
we notice how a bird can fly in the sky or how a fish can swim underwater. This has just been a gradual step-by-step -step process over many years which through natural selection has resulted into the beings we see today. As the weak species die, the strong species survive, changing, adapting and growing to their environment. This planet and this universe was not designed for us. We merely adapted to the environment in order to survive. You think this is a fine-tuned planet by a designer. I am saying this is a random planet come about by chance in a random universe in which over millions of years we have come adapted to. Good point. Now, if you were interested in this debate, please check out our book, Does God Exist? A Philosophical Inquiry. Available hardback and ebook, just visit philosophyvibe.com. The teleological argument is covered in there. And that's it for now. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe. Please post your comments and your thoughts below about the teleological argument. We'd really like to hear them. If we get some good debates going, we'd be happy to do a follow-up video and credit the posters. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Please help this channel grow. Thank you so much. Until next time.